Good afternoon. My name is Mark Padilla, and I will be talking about reducing standardized testing in uh, Texas. Um, some of you may not know, but uh, the reason there's such a big significance and importance on standardized testing is the fact that um, the government introduced the No Child Left Behind Act in 2002. So now standardized testing is seen as much more important. <clears throat> so some of you may ask, what actually is a standardized test? Well, standardized test is just a large-scale test that is administered to students and scored in the same manner. So I'm pretty sure that we've all gone through standardized testing, and that's a definition from the Center for Public Education. Now, the reason they're standardized is because this is the same exact test given throughout all, all the schools and all the districts, so that way that the schools and the districts can be compared. And these are typically um, developed and administered by third parties. And I remember in 2012, uh, the school district actually spent $498 million uh, for Pearson to develop their tests. Now, we go under a system that's called high-stakes testing. <clears throat> and this is, high-stakes testing means that it has consequences with it. So, um, it's how our schools are ranked and it's how we're ranked as students based on factors like uh, your ethnicity or your income or where you're coming from. Um, so then these, some of these um, effects of high stakes testing are evaluations on teachers' performance. So teachers are actually being evaluated on how well their students do on a specific test. And then also the school, if you, you know, if you had a majority of people do well on, well on a test, then they assume, oh, this school is good, their academics are good, their teachers are good, and if you have high percentage do poorly on that test, then that school is criticized because, oh, they need better teachers and um, better tutoring services and different things like that for their students. And then even some of these tests actually are required for you to pass, either to go to the next grade or to actually be allowed to graduate. So like I said, in the no, the no Child Left Behind Act in 2002, so what it is is schools have to show that they're making adequate yearly progress, which just means that their students are continually progressing and doing better on these tests. And that's from greatschools.org. Uh, test students, so what, what uh, the requirements for behind this act are that the students have to be tested in reading and math from grades three through eight, and at least once from 10 through 12. You have to be tested in science at least once in elementary school, middle school, and high school. And the consequences of not meeting these requirements and meeting the standards that the state sets for you, you could lose federal funds. You could, they, they give the option to students to transfer schools. So now what you have is a bunch of uh, students that are smart and are doing well on the tests and know how to do well on these tests. Then they often leave the school because it's being criticized as a poor school. So it's just like with a college. If a college has a poor reputation, not a lot of students are going to want to go there. So that's what's happening. So then they lose even more funding because then they're losing their students. And then you can even have a complete restructuring of the school. So actually having the state officials come in and try to run the school and hire new people and new teachers and everything. So consequences of standardized testing. There was actually a study and research due um, by Professor Walter Schrute from UT. He has a group of people who are running data on the actual uh, tests and everything. From, that's from New York Times. And they say that the test actually doesn't test the knowledge of the student because it's simply test taking tests and how well the student was prepared before actually going to school. And they're better at just ranking the students. So there'd be like, let's say that you did well on the test but then they would rank you, oh, you did well on the test because you were put in a group of Hispanic students or because you come from a high poverty area, then you're good for your area. It doesn't actually show how much you know. And then again, test scores impact how much funding a school gets from the government. So if the school is doing poorly, then the government's not gonna wanna fund that school. So there are certain requirements you meet as far as testing. And then again, this, perform this uh, affects low performing districts because they're at risk of takeover by state officials. Again, state officials coming in and telling them what they need to be teaching, what they need to get their teachers to do, maybe even changing the principals and the teachers themselves. 
And then this just causes a lot of pressure on the, the school officials, the teachers, and as well as the students, because the students are the ones being hounded to do well on these tests. So then this just cr creates a poor environment for learning, because who wants to go to a classroom when all you're doing is being told you have to do well on this test, you have to do well on this test, and you're not actually learning. And then again, this can lead to text, test anxiety, because the students are under so much pressure to do well on these tests that they end up for most likely forgetting everything that they know for that brief t moment while they're taking the test, and it's not actually a sign of their knowledge. So this has created a norm called teaching to the test, and this is where teachers actually plan the curriculum around the state test. So they're only teaching the things that you need to know for the test, or they're teaching you how to take the test, which again, isn't really a good learning environment. You know, you lose the dynamic creativity of actually having hands-on projects, or again, learning what you need to do actually in the real workforce, and actually being able to enjoy learning and have it fun and creative. Um, on average, high school students in Texas spend 29 to 45 days a year taking tests. And then again, this has another negative effect on more of the arts, the art, the music, and certain physical sciences are actually being eliminated because the state is not testing them. And then a new test that Texas is now trying to implement is a STAR test, and this was implemented back in 2012. And when it was first implemented, the biggest issue people had was that now you have, instead of taking like tax where you had the four tests, you know, you'd be done with it. The STAR, you'd actually have to take 15 exit level tests, and you have to pass every single one in order to graduate. And then what another thing the teachers didn't like is it's out of their control because for the start test, it would also count as 15% of your final grade. So then this removed the locality of the school districts being saying, okay, we know our teachers, they're gonna know, know what's best about actually teaching our students and how well they're doing academically. Now, the state is coming in and saying, no, we're gonna take 15% of that grade and you have to pass this test in order to graduate. Now, recently House Bill 5 was passed about a year ago in uh, 2013 um, in response to the STAR test. And so now, instead of taking the 15 tests, students only have to take five. And it says that it reduces maximum hours students prepare for tests from 90 down to 21. Um, and it's more flexible with diploma plans and it also abolishes the rule that end of year tests count for 15% of the course's grade. Now standardized testing, I, I do see as a problem because again, all you're doing is learning for the test and being taught for a test. I would rather be going to a classroom like college where, a where the teacher makes the curriculum, tells you what you're gonna be learning, and it's much more enjoyable. So now the mission is, do we eliminate standardized testing altogether and how do we do that while still holding our teachers accountable? So we have to work as a society, and a, as a student body, and being in school, and work to find ways where we can still hold the teachers accountable, but have a much more learning, enjoyable learning experience, and actually be learning about things that will actually help us out in the world. Thank you for your time.